Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you're having a really wonderful day. Today's video is all about what would you be doing in your private practice if you stopped worrying, if you stopped worrying about what other people think. You know, um, I can't remember where I heard this, but I am familiar with the saying that what other people think is none of our business. And that was just such a powerful um, mantra for me to connect into. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I want to talk with you about what could be possible for you in your practice if you were able to let go of some of these symptoms of imposter syndrome or some of these fears that you have around being judged or criticized or not good enough or not right enough or make it a mistake so that you can start to receive even more abundance in your private practice. Um, so let me begin by saying if you're in that space and you can identify with what I'm talking about, please know you're absolutely not alone. I really believe, um, you know, in my experience, this is, I don't, I haven't met anybody who's never, ever, ever worried about what other people think when it comes to their private practice. So you're in good company. And in fact, it probably means that you're very aware and having an aware practice owner, I believe is a really good thing. So, <laughs> um, but let me tell you a little bit quickly about my experience. So I went from like mainstream psychology, um, working as a psychologist within largely a medical model because of the programs I chose to work under at the time, like Medicare and um, work cover and TAC and all those sorts of things. So it was all very evidence-based and scientific and very serious and very much about um, here's the assessment, here's the diagnosis, here's the treatment, here's the treatment plan, here's the progress, here's the um, progress report, here's the discharge summary, um, all of this sort of stuff, right? And when I had that experience a few years ago now, when all those big shifts came to light in my then industry, um, it caused me to reevaluate a lot of things. And of course, I went back to things that I had found safety and hope in, in my childhood. And those were things like, you know, using my cards, <laughs> um, linking back with my crystals, all, all those sorts of things. Um, and so that's what I was leaning into. And the more I went into that, the more hopeful I became, the more um, aware I became that there's more to supporting clients than, you know, putting people in this box. And um, I understand there's a role for um, a diagnosis. Um, they inform treatment and things like that. But I'm not a big fan of labels and so Anyway, this awareness within me that there are other ways than the ways that I was required to use in psychology to help people became more and more and more front of my mind. And as a result of that, it became harder for me to work in psychology. And so I started posting on my social media about my experiences with spirituality. At the time, I was loving manifesting. Um, I was loving law of attraction. There were so many crossovers and I could see the parallels. Um, you know, I think spirituality and, and some of the evidence based in psychology actually overlap in um, a number of places. They actually um, do the same thing, but use different language. So I started speaking about that. And guess what? I was heckled. I was bullied. I had colleagues go and write articles about how dangerous it is to, you know, um, talk about spirituality and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it caused me to pause for a moment because I did start to reflect on, you know, am I doing the right thing? Is it okay for me to be talking about this? Is it okay for me to be talking about, you know, creating your own reality? Is it okay for me to be talking about connecting with that inner voice? Is it okay for me to be talking about, you know, using um, pictures, um, pictures that you see on cards, not in therapy, but is it okay for me to be talking about using pictures on cards to gain insights that, that our conscious mind can't access? And why is this suddenly a bad thing? And so I stopped for a hot minute and then the pull within me, I just knew I was doing the right thing. I just knew this was my calling, this was my truth. And 
I made the decision, you know, at that time that I was going to have to leave psychology. And so that's what I did. And now I openly speak about the masculine and the feminine. I openly speak about finding answers within. I openly speak about connecting to something bigger than yourself. I openly integrate things from different belief systems, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be Sufi systems, whether it be, do you know what I mean? Like all over um, because I've traveled and I've grabbed that experience. And so um, I'm very, very fortunate now to feel grounded and anchored in what's true for me. And the other thing that I want you to know too, another experience that I've had is people that don't align with that or people that don't align with my philosophies or with me, <laughs> um, you know, sometimes they will go off and they will have conversations about all the things that they don't like about me. And they'll say it in ways that aren't very nice and all this sort of jazz. And do you know what? It honestly, I can hand on my heart tell you, it doesn't affect me because well, two things. Number one, I'm so anchored in what I'm doing. I'm so anchored in my truth. My philosophy is all about being helpful, hopefully, as you know. <laughs> I want to be super duper helpful. Um, I want to be giving back, which hopefully you get to experience that with things like these videos and the podcasts and the free groups and my little $7 group and things like that. I love to be... Um, present and I love to be a resource for people and I am just so grounded in integrating spiritual things this is my jam this is my wheelhouse this is what I do I don't know any other person that has traveled the world and met with all of these people and teaches it from that direct experience to other private practice owners. Um, this is my little corner of the internet and I love it so, 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 so much. And do you know what? When you feel grounded and anchored in what you do, you become unshakable. Like even if, this is what I want you to know, even if you do a video and people don't like it or even if the worst case scenario happens and and people go off in a corner and say horrible things about you you become unshakable because you know what you stand for and there's nothing that can really change that so I guess what I want you to take away from this video today is that when it comes to private practice you get to be unshakable in your truth as well. And when you're unshakable, it means that not you're fearless. It's not like you're suddenly Xena warrior woman or anything like that, but there is definitely an absence of fear. So if someone criticizes you or if someone disagrees with what you're saying or if someone wants to add their opinion or something like that, it doesn't really trigger you. You don't get escalated. There's none of that feeling in your body like something's not right. And it comes from that place of being really grounded and anchored in what you know to be true for you so what does this mean when someone like me says hey you should do a 90-day challenge and go do a video every single day and you're in your head about what if I say the wrong thing what if I make a mistake what if someone heckles me what if someone you know whatever you're you're worried about that you're in your head I want you to understand that you're probably in that space because you're not trusting yourself if you trust and believe that what you're saying and sharing is true for you, if you trust and believe that what you're saying is said with um, the highest of intention, if you trust and believe that what you're sharing is in the highest good and it's with the intention of the people that need to hear it, being able to watch it or listen or read it, then you're going to be just fine. But if you're worried about those things, don't do your video, don't do your post. Come and get some support and some guidance. Let's get you nice and grounded and anchored. 
because I want you to be able to, in the way that's right for you, whether it's on your blog post or your email or social, wherever you're sharing it, I want you to be able to share it through an expansive energy, through an expansive energy. It feels so expansive for you because it feels so good to give helpful information to people, but also it feels so good because you're not in your head. You've stopped making it about you and you're connecting back with your purpose. You're connecting back with love and you're connecting back with a genuine desire to want to help people. Okay. Now I know some of you might be thinking, oh, but what if I do make a mistake? Do you know what? Mistakes happen. And in my experience, I've made bucket loads. I mean, all you have to do is go back through my social and you see I do a million videos. Do you think all of them were perfect? Absolutely not. I've tripped over my words. I've had dogs running in the background. I was recording a podcast the other day and my next door neighbor started whippersnippering. <laughs> I mean, you have to get okay with things not being perfect. And at the end of the day, no one cares. Nobody sent me a hate message because I had a whippersnipper in my podcast. Um, so don't worry about it. I think you'll find most people are very understanding that life happens, especially with so many of us working from home now. But the other thing I have found, and it, I know it's true for some of my clients and perhaps it's true for you too, but when you make little, you know, foibles on your, on your, um, I don't know, shares, it kind of makes you a little bit more relatable. People, you know, it kind of, I think sometimes clients can see there's a disparity, like we're over here and they're over there. But when we um, have these little things happen, we um, forget what we're talking about, which happens to me all the time. If you listen to my podcast, you'll hear me and I'm just going off on a tangent. And then I'll say, I was going to tell you something, but I forget what it was. Maybe it will come back to me. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> It happens to me all the time. People don't opt out of listening to my podcast because of that. People are generally understanding, generally forgiving. They genuinely respect that it takes guts <laughs> to put yourself out there. And most people are nice people, okay? So anchor into that. But, yeah, if there's anything um, that I can help you with, it's you must be totally grounded and anchored in why are you doing this who are you doing it for and why is it so important to you to get it out there and get okay with being imperfect because nobody's perfect and imperfect actions better than no action at all and it's not about you it's about the people that need to hear the tip the tool the process the information that only you can share by the way because get this while we all went and learned the same approaches <laughs> um whether it was acceptance and commitment therapy whether it was cognitive behavioral therapy whether it was person-centered we all learned the same stuff but hey guess what we all do it differently through our own life lens through our own personality um all of these sorts of things so you can do it um get grounded get anchored and you can be free free to just show up without having to have that pressure you know sort of hanging over you that's what I want for you okay so hopefully this was a super helpful video um and I would love to know you know what would you be doing more of in your private practice if you worried less about what others think what would you be doing more of? Would you be doing more videos? Would you be doing more sessions? Would you be marketing differently? Would you be niching? Would you be talking about spirituality more like I do? Like, what would it be? I love to know. Let's just imagine if this concern about what other people think didn't exist, if it wasn't a thing, what would be different in your private practice? What would be going on? What would we be seeing? What would be happening? I love to know. Let me know in the comments. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I totally get it. Send me a message. Love to support you with this. I hope that you have an amazing, amazing day. We still have a couple of spots available for business mentoring if you're interested in that. Supervision, there's only two places left now for supervision. Um, if you're interested in that, let me know. If, there, if you're not at that stage yet where you want to make that time or energy commitment, 
that's totally fine. There's also a group for private practice owners, people who are new to private practice. It's called the Private Practice Success Hub and it's just $7 a month. And yeah, if you want the link to that, let me know. Um, you get so much goodness in there as well. Templates, tools, coaching, resources, 24 hour support, you name it, the works. <laughs> so as I said, I love, 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 love to help and support and give back where I can. So let me do that for you too. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.